Welcome back to Violent Money TV. Today, I am joined by Jordan Molinari, who makes his Cage Warriors debut at Cage Warriors 178 on September 21st. Um, as Cage Warriors said themselves when they posted about this fight being announced, uh, an anticipated debut because of your amateur experience. So I thought that would be the best place to start. Obviously, a lot of that was through IMAF and the Four Nations, I think, is the most interesting one to talk about because... I've started to speak to more fighters over the last couple of years who have got a lot of experience in IMAF, but the Four Nations is still quite a, a newer thing where we're starting to get, you know, yourself and, and other guys that competed on there come through the pro ranks. So talk to me about that and, and the setup for that and how beneficial that was before the pro career. The only thing about the Four Nations was obviously where I'm flyweight, there wasn't that many in my category. Um, mm. The first time I entered into the Four Nations, there was supposedly... Obviously, me, um, Ethan Riddler from Wales, and then there was someone from Scotland and Ireland, but Scotland and Ireland didn't show up. So I agreed to fight Ethan on the Friday and then rematch him on the Sunday just to gain the experience. You know, I didn't want to travel all the way up here at the time. Obviously, I didn't live in Liverpool, so I didn't want to travel all the way up here at the time just for the one fight when there was another fight there waiting for me, more experience, more rounds in the bag if I could get it. So we agreed to that and we had a, we had a good time doing it and all. Yeah, I mean, obviously that kind of led into you making the decision, like you said, to now go up to, to Liverpool to train at Next Gen and stuff. I imagine, was that decision partly made by the fact that, because Molly is the, was the coach while she was there, right, for, for Team England? It wasn't quite then. Um, right. Obviously, that's where I met Molly. But uh, around about a month, a month and a half later, um, English MMA put on a squad day up at Next Gen. So obviously Paul Rimmer and Ellis Hansen took the um took the squad day and that's when I opened my eyes. I was like, this is this is where I need to be, this is where I need to be trained, this is what I need to be doing. And and I've not looked back since, to be honest, mate. I've trained at a few gyms up and down the country. And this the the level of the room is incredible, the coaching is incredible. It's it's, it's where I'm happy being. So yeah, I, I feel like I've improved a hell of a lot since being there. And and it don't stop the ceiling. What's what's the term? <laughs> I don't know about the the height. The ceiling, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, the, it's a uh, it's, it's such a high level, and uh, and I, and I keep improving every day. So I, mean, I know I'm in the right place. Yeah, I think. I mean, you mentioned it right at the start there about um, the difficulties that, that that come with getting fights at an amateur level when you're a flyweight, just because there isn't a whole lot of options there. And I think next gen. Um, one of the brilliant things about it, obviously, has always had a really strong stable of fighters, but it feels like now more than ever, and this has increased every year. It feels like um, there's so many different styles and bodies there that the variety is really there right now at next gen, which. I think for a while, maybe the UK scene was kind of lacking like some of those really big gyms where you can go and get all these different looks. And and Next Gen is one of those places now. Like, how was that a big decision to go to to Next Gen? Like, was that a big influence on you? Because um, especially in the smaller weight classes, the amount of talent, the diversity of talent there is is pretty crazy right now. Yeah, um, it was and it wasn't. Obviously, the coaching and the training was 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 the biggest thing for me. And then I looked at my potential training partners, obviously Molly, Connor Wilson, Fran Breen. Uh, obviously, not a lot in the in the smaller weight bracket in the flyweight division, but then a little you look a little bit further, and we have got Liam Gittins as well, who's more my size, and obviously Nathan Fletcher. Um, and so, so obviously I looked at that and I thought that's a great professional uh, stable there, uh, good training partners for me to train with. But then you you reach even further out. It, it, the list don't stop. The Luke Riley, the Cher, Adam Cullen, Paddy. Like it's it's getting bigger and better, and they're all going to be on the biggest stage soon. Yeah, you mentioned Liam Gins there. I think uh, from your social media, it seems like you and you and him get along very well. Train together quite a lot as well. Obviously, the bantamweight champion at the moment in Cage Warriors. So, in terms of being in a UK gym, you couldn't really ask for for many better um, across the smaller weight classes than having Liam there full time. What's it like to train with that guy? Because I imagine he uh, when 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 everyone else is like, we'll call that the last round. He seems like the person that will go, ah, one more. <laughs> yeah, no, Liam can go for days. Uh, great, great guy. Uh, we're definitely both on the spectrum somewhere that we just meet together <laughs> and, and we, we have a good laugh. Even, even after the gym, we're, we'll be on Call of Duty and 
he's been giving me, he's in London at the minute, uh, helping Liam McCall train for a fight this weekend. He's, he's on WhatsApp giving me shit. So <laughs> it's great. It's great to have him as a friend and a training partner. Uh, as I mentioned to you before we started this interview, I spoke to Nathan Fletcher today at the time of recording and uh, asked him for a little bit of a, a heads up what people can expect from this Cage Warriors debut against Matthew Friel. Um, and, you know, he obviously had incredibly, uh, you know, uh, a lot of praise to say about your game. Um, and he kind of started to go down a, a, a route of talking about your grappling and how much that in particular has come a, a really long way um since being at next gen and then kind of ended it off with he probably won't use that though because you probably want to just have a scrap and i think that, <laughs> that kind of sums you up pretty well from what i've seen as well is that fair yeah it's pretty fair to say i, just, I like getting stuck in the deep end uh but if, if, if it happens it happens do you know what i mean i'm uh i'm not scared of it happening i'm it is what it is just part of the game, right? But I'm, I know what the fans want to see. I know what everyone wants to see. Look how well Luke Riley does on the stage. That's that's what people want to see, and that's what I want to. That's what I want to do. That's the kind of performance I want to put out, especially on Cage Warriors. I want to be getting them, them finishes. So yeah, that's um, fair to say. That's what you'll see. Have you been to any of the Cage Warriors Manchester shows to support the rest of the guys? I have. I've been to a few. Um, obviously, since I've been up here. Hmm. One of them, I was like, really, the the the, the Luke Riley and, and Alexander Lou fight. I was actually cage side. I was um I was recording bits for Paddy's vlog for him because Blaze wasn't in the UK. So they asked me if I could get some shots for that, and uh and I was literally I was right there as watching it all like it was madness. I couldn't believe I'd just watched that live. So I've made that walk up and down that runway at the BEC Arena. I've been backstage. I feel like I've done everything there. Now it's just my turn. So put on the gloves and, and go and put on a shot. Yeah, I mean, those Manchester shows, I, I've been to a fair few myself. And there's, you know, that of course, there's great fights throughout the whole evening, but it does always feel like there's kind of highs every time there's an X-Gen fighter coming out. Um, It really does feel like those have become some great showcase events for the gym. You know, there's usually like three or four guys at least on those cards having been there in person for for that atmosphere i mean you you picked a good one to be case side for um you that must give you a lot of excitement to be like that's going to be me soon and like you said you've already you've already done the walk you've already kind of uh seen everything how it works and yeah. uh so just just ready to go put on a show yeah literally mate literally uh, um there was talks about it maybe being on the unplugged mm. uh on obviously on the card before which i was welcome to i was happy and that's originally what I thought it was. But then as I was reading over the contract, I noticed it said the 21st. I, I had a chat with my coach and he said, yeah, that's right. So I was like, I got a little bit more excited because I was like, there's going to be energy there from the fans. There's going to be a, a big presence there as well. So, yeah, I was, uh, I'm was. i really looking forward to that. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the, the next gen fighters coming out, it always seems to, to take the evening up a level. And with the likes of Luke also on the card, you know that there's going to be some crazy fights on there. So... This card's going to be wicked. These Manchester shows always are. And uh, excited for the debut, mate. So appreciate your time. And I'm sure we'll catch up with you sometime after. Thank you very much, my man. All right. Nice one, man. Have a good rest of your evening. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the time. Take care. Cheers. Nice one, man.